So I've got a question for you. In the previous video, we created a new route and it won, meaning the router looked at that route and said, I like you better than the existing route and it put our new route in the routing table. Now the question I have for you is, do you remember why the router preferred the route that we added versus the router that it currently had? And if you're saying, Keith, yeah, we, we just watched the video. <laughs> it was administrative distance. A route with a lower administrative distance is preferred by the router. It puts that in the routing table and it basically ignores everything that's worse as far as administrative distance. That is spot on. Now, the next question that we get to answer is, what if we're a router? Let's imagine that we're router four and we're sitting there and we're learning about some remote network and we're learning it from several different sources and they all have the same exact administrative distance. Oops, what do we do now? Well, if they have the same exact administrative distance, we can't really say, oh, you're better or worse based on AD, based on the administrative distance. It's the same. So the next tiebreaker is, or would be, the cost. Which one is the cheapest to take? And that's what we get to verify right now in the lab, is that cost is the tiebreaker if the administrative distance is the same between who gets in the routing table and who doesn't. And for this exercise in the lab, let's imagine that we are router four right here. And let's imagine that we're looking at the route for the 10.3.0 network right here. Now, if R4 is learning about the 10.3.0 network and the administrative distance is the same, regarding all the updates that it's getting about the 10.3 network, the next tiebreaker is the metric. In the case of OSPF, that's going to be cost. And in the case of other routing protocols like RIP, it may be considered to be the hop count. And in either case, the lower the number based on the metric, the better the route. So if we look at the cost of the interfaces as router four tries to get to the 10.3 network to go over this way, the egress or the outbound interface would be a cost of 10. Here would be a cost of one. So the bottom path would be a cost of 11. I'll put that B for bottom. And the top path out gigabit, two slash zero gigabit would be a cost of one. And here would be a one. And here would be a one. And there would be a one. So that's one, two, three, and four. So I'll call that the top path would be four. Uh, the serial path is going to be crazy because it's like in the 600 range. <laughs> so once we get up in the hundreds, it's out of competition. So I'll, I'll put middle path, C, R, A, Z, high, right? It's crazy high. And so really with R4, the question is, do we forward it up this way north or we go this way west? That's really its two choices. And what it should decide on it should decide on going north because the cost is four <laughs> and then R2 gets it. And then it's really up to R2 to make its own choice on how it wants to forward the packet in the direction of the 10.3 network. But from R4's perspective, it thinks the best path is to go up to R2. So here's what I like to do to demonstrate how metric is used or cost is used in OSPF as the tiebreaker on what route might be used. And that is if we disable gig two slash zero, where the cost currently should be a one, two, three, four to get to the 10.3 10, network. If we disable this interface altogether, that route will no longer be available. And the next option would be a cost of 11, which is better than nothing. And that route will then show up and be put into the routing table with a cost of 11 going out the fast ethernet interface. And the big purpose here in demonstrating this is to help reinforce the idea that if we have multiple routes and the administrative distance is the same, the next tiebreaker is gonna be the best cost, the lowest cost. And that's the route we're gonna put into the routing table. So here in our lab environment, I'm here on DC NUG, the management computer, and I've got a console open to R4. Also just peeking at our topology real quick. We are gonna take a look at the route how, for how to get to the 10.3 network first. Then we'll shut down gig two slash zero, and then we'll watch R4 use its next best option cost-wise, which is going to be out FA four slash one. Or at least that's what we're predicting. All right, so let's do a show IP route for the 10.0.0.0 network, and that'll show us all the 10 networks. There's our network right there, 10.3. So currently our cost is four, that's great. The next top is 10.24.0.2, and our egress or outbound interface is gigabit two slash zero. And if we wanna verify which route is being chosen, we can do a show IP route space, and then we can put in a destination of 10.3.0.3, which is an IP address on R3, on that 10.3.0 network, and that should show us exactly which route from the routing table is chosen, and also the details about that route. So that route was learned via OSPF, the administrative distance, the current metric, which is the cost. Fantastic. So now let's go ahead and do a config T. We'll go into interface gig two slash zero, and I'm gonna verify that's the right interface. I'm gonna look at my topology real quick. Sure enough, gig two zero. And in this interface, we'll do a shutdown. 
We'll give that a moment to converge, and then we'll do a show IP route for the 10 network again. And there is our new route. Check it out. It's now going out fast, Ethernet 4 slash 1. The next hop is 10.34.03. That's R3. The administrative distance is still 110, still an OSPF learned route, but the cost now is 11. And the only reason that this route is being used <laughs> is because the, the better cost route with a cost of 4 is no longer available because gig 2 slash 0 is down. And if we went back in, went into interface gig 2 slash 0 and did a no shutdown, and then we did a do show IP route for the 10 network. And we might need to wait just for a moment, there we go, for our adjacency to come up with our neighbor there and press enter. Once again, we're now going out the gigabit 2 slash 0 interface with our next top of 10.24.0.2 and there's our OSPF learned route because the cost is better. A cost of 4 is way better than a cost of 11. So when it comes to choosing which route goes in the winner's table, the routing table on a Cisco router, the lowest AD wins. If there's a tie there, we have more than one route with the same AD, the next tiebreaker is cost or the metric. And again, the lower is better with both of those. So thanks for joining me in the lab and in this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.